Badminton, the fastest sport in the world, with shuttle speeds in excess of 400 kilometers an hour. As a result, athletes are required to rapidly move around the court. This is termed agility. Recent research has confirmed that agility is the single greatest predictor of performance in badminton athletes, yet current assessment is generic and uninformative. Agility can be separated into two components. Firstly, the physical change of direction or the doing of the movement, and secondly, the mental processing of when and where the movement is to occur. The aim of my research is to focus on the physical change of direction. The first test is a measure of body fat percentage. As fat mass increases the athlete's weight and therefore increases the force required to move them about the court, without increasing their ability to exert force. The second measure is leg length and also hip flexibility, as these are two key measures of lunge performance. With lunging included in approximately 90% of all badminton movement patterns, it's the most frequent in the sport. The fourth test is vertical jump, and this measures leg strength in the horizontal plane. While measuring leg strength in the vertical plane, we, can, we require athletes to complete a lunge in one of eight directions as quickly as possible. Finally, they complete the badminton specific technique test, which requires athletes to use self-selected footwork to move from the centre of the court to one of the eight perimeter locations in back as quickly as possible. These tests are crucial, as they not only determine which athlete has better agility, but why they have better agility. As an athlete one, maybe slow at moving to the forehand side of the court because they have terrible footwork, whereas athlete two may be poor at moving to the forehand side of the court because they've got poor leg strength. Understanding these strengths and weaknesses is crucial as they allow coaches to design the best programs they can for each individual athlete. We're currently completing a large scale data collection from a range of athletes. And initial results suggest that each test is reliable between sessions and that if athlete one beats athlete two in week one, they'll also beat athlete two in week two and week three. Additionally, the tests also appear to rank athletes according to their overall ability and that national representatives perform higher than regional representatives who in turn perform higher than club athletes. If these results are confirmed, it provides coaches and athletes with a means to assess the change of direction performance, which is crucial in ensuring that our New Zealand athletes achieve the best results on the world stage. Thank you.